All right, so here we are in chapter three, and uh, what we're getting into here would be a series of chapters. So the next four chapters are going to be specifically designed to get into some aspects of the functions of cells and be thinking about how those relate to development and more specifically how they relate to each other and creating the embryo over time and of course growing into us as a as an adult organism as well so in this section what we'll be doing is going through cell division and the cell cycle and talking about some aspects of that i suspect a lot of this material will be overview for you guys and things that you've seen before so on these particular lectures you could probably just go through fill in the blanks in your notebook and maybe be done with it but as a 300 level course there are going to be a couple of details here and there that uh, maybe are new to you in the context of, of these subjects so um, if you need to definitely spend a little bit more time on some of that material I suspect the regulation stuff at the end will be some new material for you all right, so let's start with cell division. Obviously, cell division is a pretty fundamental process with regards to development. And by developmental growth here, what I'm talking about is simply the fact that we go from a zygote to a organism with, in our case, trillions of cells. And the basis for how we get there, without even considering how we have all these different cell types and so on, that's a question for later. But the question of how we go from one cell to trillions is going to be cell division. So a mother cell is going to divide, give two new daughter cells, and that is going to be really what's responsible for the growth. Now, obviously, when we became adults, we stopped growing in a sense, but it's important to realize that uh, this, the role that cell division plays in the growth of our bodies does not necessarily let up in some tissues and is going to essentially be responsible for uh, maintenance if you will so we're not getting bigger as far as growth goes but growth is replacing cells that we're losing so this could be found in replacement of cells and tissues like the skin the lining of the stomach or the small intestines those places where cells are constantly being regenerated, our blood cells constantly being regenerated. And of course, those times where we cut ourselves or we uh, get injured, then cell division is going to help replace some of those cells that were possibly damaged and, uh, and died during that process. Now, not every tissue has that ability, but a lot of our tissues do. So cell division would be a part of that as well. When it comes to the ability to divide, our cells, or the cells in our bodies, tend to come in three different patterns. So stem cells are cells that generally are defined as when they divide, they replace themselves and they become a cell or make a cell that's going to become some other cell type. So a stem cell that you guys are probably familiar with would be the blood stem cells and our bone marrow. And so whenever one of those divides, then the stem cell gets replaced and one of the daughter cells becomes a white blood cell or a red blood cell as it differentiates. Proliferating cells, these are ones that certainly are found in us as we grow. And these are the ones that are trying to increase the size of the organism. And this is a way in which we can essentially create a large population of similar cells. So we'll see this very early in development, but this is not a process that you and I currently have going on much right now. And if it is happening inside of our bodies, it generally would be related to some kind of a cancerous situation. Because uh, doing this is largely what cancer cells are, are about. Differentiated cells are ones that have actually stopped dividing and are essentially mature they know what they're supposed to do they're doing what they're supposed to do and are going to probably not divide unless they are specifically told to divide or they pick up some kind of a damage that makes them divide all right so this cell division cycle that we go through is what's called the cell cycle 
and this is one way that cell biologists will use to define essentially the lifespan of a cell and it we generally with a few exceptions obviously there's some stem cells who we can you know, the stem cell creates another cell we generally refer to that stem cell as continuing on but whenever a uh, normal cell divides and creates two daughter cells we generally think in terms of the mother cells life is essentially over and we now have two daughter cells with their own lives to live so it, uh, it's a little bit weird to think about but that's generally how these terms are applied to the life of a cell the cell cycle has four phases to it you've probably seen this before and the first three phases are what are called interphase the g1 s and g2 will summarize some of the events of those as we go along and then of course the m phase this is where the actual division is going to take place so m you'll be familiar with from mitosis or meiosis taking place during that phase so here's a pretty neat figure i think that summarizes all of it and again i picked a figure here where it kind of has some info on it so you can use it to, to look at study so if the lifespan of a cell begins as soon as it's formed then now this cell goes through its lifespan and eventually will divide itself and become two new daughter cells and so we go through g1 we go through s we go through g2 and then the m phase which involves some kind of a division mechanism we'll come back to the what the chromosomes are doing obviously that's a big uh, part of this story uh, making sure that these instructions for how to build things get passed on to the next generation whether it be cell to cell or in meiosis to the next generation of organisms but uh, that'll be largely part of the the goal of the cell as it goes through this process all right let's just uh, put a few general concepts on these things so g1 is the initial phase and generally if you think of the cell in the body doing what that cell does and it is not currently involved in any kind of division then this would be a cell we say is in g1 phase this is called the first gap so generally cells that are rapidly dividing are goes through the s phase and the m phase and uh, are going to be able to alternate between those two this first gap phase is a cell where it's doing its normal activities <coughs> um, so things like metabolism gene expression organelle maintenance duplication all that's going on here a lot of the cells in our bodies actually are going to remain in this phase this is what we call the g-naught phase and uh, means that they have essentially exited the cell cycle and will not divide unless they are told to do so and in fact most cells are not going to divide uh, abnormally anyway or just randomly there are several things that have to happen in order for a cell to divide so several things that will show up in our discussions as we go along in development are going to be a growth factor so somebody nearby secretes a growth factor that tells us it's time to divide growth factors are also going to tell us how to differentiate and become the cell that we're supposed to be. Uh, cell division is also going to respond to nutrient availability. It'll also check around and make sure that the, we don't want too many cells in an area, so it is going to respond to cells around it, the cell, what we call cell density, and cells are certainly going to be wanting to touch other cells if we damage that or remove those contacts they may start to divide in order to fill in the gap so for example we cut ourselves the skin's gonna be driven to close itself back up because cells have been severed from each other and another thing that cells are doing to make sure it's a good idea to divide is they're checking through their dna often for damage We'll come back to the story of growth factors and uh, how they work their magic on cells uh, when we get to the signaling chapter. But for now, let's just say growth factors are going to bind to receptors. And this would be one of those proteins that is found in the 
plasma membrane and the cells are looking for on the outside. When they receive that signal that it's time to divide, they move into the S phase. This is what you guys probably learned in the past as the synthesis phase. And this is where we're going to be able to make our copies of the genetic information. At this point, well actually it's a little bit before we get to S phase, the cell is going to move through what we call a restriction point. This is largely a point of no return. And it's essentially the point at which a cell, once we've moved past this, we must complete division all the way through. So that's why a lot of cells will just stay arrested in G1 because they don't want to go past that point. The S phase, like I said, is largely when DNA replication takes place. And this is where, you remember, we have our chromosomes. We want to make copies of those chromosomes. And this will ensure that both of our daughter cells get complete copies of that information. We'll see that the each cell doesn't necessarily need all that information, but they have to have access for it. So we definitely want to, one, duplicate our genome. We got to do it pretty quickly. And we want to maintain the integrity. So we, we have to not avoid mutation, but we have to reduce the amount of mutations that we make during that process. G2 phase is the second gap and comes after S phase. And this is largely just a period of time and it's usually fairly short for most cell division cycles where the cell is going to essentially check behind, make sure everything that we've done is okay, and check forward to make sure that we have everything we need in order to move into the next phase. So this is a good time to prepare for division. It's also a good time to make sure that any mistakes we made during replication get corrected before we go forward. This is really a good time for making stuff and things that we would probably be making at this point would be the spindle proteins. Remember the cytoskeleton is going to be very much involved in separating our DNA. Chromosomes, the DNA has to condense and obviously we didn't really need any regulators for mitosis or meiosis until now so we usually wait until now to make them. Once it's completed those preparations they will move on into M phase and of course if we're talking about body cells and creating two diploid daughter cells from the mother cell, then this is gonna use what we call mitosis. And then if we're talking about creating a gamete in the germline, then obviously we'll use the process of meiosis during division. And these two will refer primarily to the division of the genetic material. And then of course, the cell division itself follows along slightly behind these two processes to give us our two new cells. So we'll focus in this chapter on the mitotic division where we get two genetically identical cells, two diploid cells from the mother cell, and we'll leave meiosis for the gametogenesis conversation when we get there. Okay? All right, so um, what we're gonna do is speak about or go through some material about S phase, kind of remind yourself what goes on there because it is important, and then we'll work our way through the M phase. And basically I've given you most of what you need for G1 and G2. We'll see those phases play important roles from time to time, but the, as far as the events that are going on there, you now have everything you need out of that. Okay, so next time we'll go through a few details on S phase. See you then.